Radio Wave Network News. I'm in Amtrak this morning talking to Sebastian. The reason I'm here is because, to my knowledge, Namtrak is the only Namibian company that has had something that they've designed and built here go to space. <laughs> Correct, yes. You guys worked in partnership with a couple of universities in, in Europe yes. to provide tracking software or tracking devices for them. Specifically a, a recovery for the re-entry capsule to be able to find it again after it well, crashes somewhere into the ground <laughs> where no one ex exactly knows where it is. And it crashed into, into snow as well, it so it was... Snow, yeah. yeah. And frozen ground, ultimately, as well. Now tell me, how did you come to get involved in this project? Started off with a vehicle tracking system about 10 years ago, uh, and soon started collaborating with Polytechnic of Namibia and other universities, and kind of got stuck in with a few researchers that were looking for a, for a solution for them to track animals essentially wildlife tracking, to be able to find the same specimen over and over again to perform special research on them. So we started developing these things, of which I have a couple of them here, um, which are then glued onto the animal and they are then being sent out to do whatever they want to do because there's still little known facts about their movements in special times of the year and mating season, when, how much do they move, winter, how much do they move and things like that. So animals that are being tracked are, are like tortoises or, or snakes and things like that. Okay, so you'd, you'd already then manage to miniaturize everything to be small enough, as you're saying, well, tortoises and <laughs> geckos, it's, it's pretty it, small. It, it took some time, obviously, to develop uh, these things, but uh, what we now put in is the fact that you can program these units to, to save more power or to have higher output power. Uh, because that's essentially what's very, very difficult in these things is the, the, the power mm -hmm. that they do, the battery inside. Mm -hmm. It's not rechargeable like a cell phone or something like that. It's, it's stuck onto an animal and then when the battery runs out, <laughs> yeah. it's gone. You cannot find it again. So uh, that's ultimately what's very important for these, for these devices, uh, that you save power. And for example, for tortoises, it's a known fact that they don't really move a lot in winter since it's very cold. Uh, so then the researchers can just, okay, we, we're just going to switch down the power, we, we know roughly where it is, it's not going to move anyways, and we're going to save power that way. Okay. So other than, than power and miniaturization, were there any other unique challenges now with sending something into space? Um, <laughs> well, none of us really knew if, if the whole thing is going to actually survive the trip, because there's, there's a lot of factors in there that don't, well, that don't come up with, with animals. Uh, a tortoise roughly is not go never going to experience uh, 21 g's of acceleration, right? It's, it's just got there. It's never going to survive uh, or, or experience minus 80 degrees or 5,000 kph speeds, uh, high vacuums, th things like that. So we didn't really know if it actually would survive the trip. And well, it did in the end. It, it survived all these things. And, and, and the last thing that we never thought it would actually survive is the, the impact into the ground with roughly 150 kph. So that was, that was kind of interesting, yeah. Well, like you said, it did survive and it's, it's actually it being survive. used again now. It's going to be used in a, in a high altitude balloon. Well, the capsule was ultimately there for researching different, cheaper and more effective heat shield components uh, to make space travel essentially more, more safe. That's what this capsule was for. Had this tracking device that, that you've created here that's now been into space, yeah. What are the options going forward for Namibia? Low budget things like a student project such as this, uh, definitely, why not? I mean, uh, it worked and it did, it did survive everything, so why not use it again? I'm, I'm sure there's going to be more of it. And uh, there was just an opportunity to, to kind of show that Namibia is not like a back world country anymore. We can also, you know, produce high quality electronics and, and high tech in this country. Obviously you guys can, but uh, for people who are interested uh, in you know, electronic engineering, I, mean, I walk into this area and it, it just, it's amazing to me. I don't understand any of it and I wouldn't <laughs> be able to use any of it, but it just looks yeah. phenomenal. Um, so if there are people out there, I mean, this is now a nice opportunity to say, well, you know, perhaps a teenager who is thinking they're interested, they'd love to become an electronic engineer, but now their parents would say to them, well, maybe you need to think of something else because there's not really much scope. Yeah. Now we can see there is scope. No, there definitely is. Vehicle tracking is our main branch, so we can definitely say that there's a, there's a high market for this, yeah. 
uh, in, especially in Namibia, also South Africa, Botswana, uh, things like that, we, we get a lot of a lot of interest from the from there, um, and also from these wildlife trackers we have exported to to USA to Europe. This track is ultimately going back to us. It's going to be sent to us back to Namibia, and then we have something that actually was in space, which is pretty cool as well. <laughs> Frame it and put it up on the wall. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> Radio Wave Network News.